Hello everybody, my name is Eric, and today we're going to be taking a look at Android malware. Android is, depending on where you live, but in most countries, the most popular mobile operating system, and the only open mobile operating system, meaning that you can download software not just from the App Store, but also from either third-party app stores or APK files, which is what we're going to be looking at today. That brings a lot of benefits, but it also brings the potential for malware, which has become a growing problem. So what we've got here are a couple of the most popular strains, and we're going to be testing them out. Thanks to our sponsor, AnyRun, who provided us, of course, with their great malware sandbox that allows us to easily interactively test these on a virtual environment. They recently added Android support, and I thought that would be really interesting to test, because I've never really done much of mobile malware, and it's frequently requested subject. So first of all, we do the submit file workflow, and we can go to here, and I think we'll try this one. This one's got me interested. I didn't, I didn't do a ton of background, but I know these things can be pretty capable. Uh, it should detect automatically that this is an APK. It does. And we'll change this to Android so that we can get that. Now, we don't have all the features, but we do have the important ones. I am going to make use of a residential proxy because it is a typical method of detecting VMs. Uh, we're also, we'll give it a bit of duration so that we can play with it. And let's see what this payload does. In just a second, we'll have a fully interactive window where we can work with malware. This all runs in the cloud, so we don't have to don't have to do anything locally. And we immediately got a detection for IRATA, which is what we just ran. Now, this VM is designed to be more efficient at testing malware by automatically... Okay, now we've got our interface. This is the AnyRun system interface, and we can see exactly what's happening. Now we can see what the fake app is actually called. We can try to open it, but you're not intended to be able to do that. Now that's one of the stealth methods. It's simply running in the background and we can see it has abused a service for persistence. So we're getting some indicators of compromise. We potentially see any connections if it attempts to connect to its command and control server. Nothing too obvious yet. And we also have the usual Android interface, so we can actually try and use this uh, virtual phone. We can open a browser, and it's just like having a local Android uh, VM, which is actually quite difficult to set up compared to a desktop operating system VM. Uh, here is the phone functionality. Some of these apps can do something really creepy. They can actually record your phone, but it seems like we got pretty much everything out of this one, so we'll stop this, and then we can see the final determination. We can see a known threat indicator and a process has been overwritten, uh, just like the kind of technique we'd see on desktop malware. Here is the actual uh, app, Iloifu Play. Uh, we don't have the AI summary, but we still have the text report, so we can get a very good overview of uh, what's going on here. We can see the type of file, see that it immediately starts a service. And we can also see the video and pretty much everything else. And we see a, a detection, a classification of malicious activity. So let's try the next sample. Okay, so now we've got one called Spy Note. Now I got a feeling uh, this is gonna be spyware, but I could be totally wrong in my guess. So we'll put, a, a, probably should do something, I'm meant to go for Belgium. We'll put a residential proxy on, and we'll give it enough time to take a look. Of course, we do have the ability, which is especially useful in a business situation, to set the private mode. Or, because, because of course, I'm doing a public demonstration, I'll set it to public so you can find it, but there we go. Now let's see what we got here. Now, a lot of these malware, in addition to being distributed on APK websites, will be sent by a technique called smishing, which is a portmanteau of phishing and SMS. Oh no, this is looking a bit sketchy. This looks like a banking Trojan. Uh, we're gonna... Gonna allow that. All oh, right, yeah, any run automatically does that. And, oh no, I just saw second stage. I don't really like, I don't really like how that's going. We've already detected uh, potentially some threats. And it's just turned on our audio and video. Yeah, that's definitely spying. Uh, it 
is checking our wake so that it can keep our microphone on so that it can use your phone to record you everywhere you go. Uh, this app is also known for recording your phone calls all the while you thought you just installed a banking app. Uh, and don't worry, it'll steal everything in your bank account too, because the real power of mobile malware is mobile devices are used as a trusted second form of authentication, so it can get things that a desktop malware would never be able to achieve, even things like banking apps that always require a one-time code to log in. Well, if they've got your phone, and worse yet, if your password happened to be saved on your phone or you typed it in and they logged it, uh, they've now got keys to the kingdom, uh, your money is gone, and uh, they're going to be buying themselves some new treats. This one is usually sent from an SMS message that impersonates a popular bank in the victim's region, telling them they need to update the app for security reasons. Unfortunately to them, they just got scammed and ratted. Spy note is a nasty payload. So there we go. So we got got hordes of different detections. It was detected as a rat. It also uh, was heavily running the CPU. Okay, so we got click a frame and triada, which could actually be the same file. But let's go with triada first, because that's a cooler name. Uh, and let's see what this sample is really up to. It's got kind of a interesting name. So we'll give it give it a reasonable amount of time, and we'll turn on MITM proxy to intercept any potentially suspicious activity. I'll make it public, and I will, in the description, share all of you the link to check out these any runs. You can just go there and you can see a replay of the run, in addition to being able to see all the results from the tools. So here we go, we got all of this set up, and now let's run a public analysis. So we'll give it some time to start. This app does not support horizontal mode, so we'll rotate the virtual phone vertically so that we can more easily read what's going on here. Now, we can see from the forbidden here on this Firebase, which shouldn't be here, that it's possible parts of this C2 server have been dealt with. So we'll put in a phone number, we'll give it the permissions, any run actually automatically gives any permissions needed. Now we can immediately see some rather suspicious activity over here got a mix uh, to a nonsense looking website sending us uh, a bit of information about the version and it's just giving us a code. Now this can be done for a number of reasons. A big one is sometimes an app will want to want to send certain information server side so that it's less easy for analysts to verify what the checks are. We can also use the MITM proxy to determine whether there is even a check going on, right? Because if if we don't see any network activity, we can see that in fact uh, that whole thing is a distraction and the real process is going on in the background. Now when we stop the sandbox, we can get the automated systems detection, which is a classification of malicious activity with the process being overridden, which is a typical evasion technique, and CPU overrun, indicating uh, quite a few questionable things are going on here. Uh, we can go, we can actually click on the process and we can see more about what's been detected. It's executing system commands through a Unix shell, which is questionable. This one is probably okay. Uh, checks whether the screen is on. That's an evasion technique. Then we see that it's connecting to an unusual port and establishing an encrypted channel with questionable servers get through the telegram related ones uh, we've got some really bizarre communications going on we also have a attempt at detecting whether there's an emulator and a, a fake name right this is claiming to be a telegram app but look at the name of this pro process this doesn't look like a telegram app it would be telegram not org.shiandig.talking I do actually have a second variant of the sample, which I run in a second, which shows the same thing. We can see some other indication. So, the sad box has ruled this as malicious. So now let's just try another APK I found. Uh, this one is from another user who tested uh, so, uh, the spy bank, and we can look through and see what their report looked like, in addition to being able to simply run this again, given this one was a public report. So let's take a, do a deeper look at this one. And choose our settings again, and let's just make this one private, show how that works. 
and we'll set up MITM proxy so we can potentially eavesdrop on any C2 activity. Now we've got something up here we're supposed to click that now has led us into installing a different version. Now it's, it's interesting how these are both impersonating the same bank. Must be quite a big bank, I'm guessing from the name in Europe, but I don't actually know. Now it would appear to the victim that the app has crashed, but in reality it is still happily running in the background. So you can't install it, checks if the lock screen is showing. Uh, it's now also using the accessibility services, which are intended to help disabled users against uh, the victim. And it has just done a bunch of things. Uh, it's, it's got a 100 out of 100 threat detection on any run. And uh, luckily it is a known threat. But we can also eavesdrop on the C2 activity. Now we've got a human verification and it looks like we may be going to a real interbank site. Seems interbank uh, is actually a Peruvian bank. Yeah, this is this is um, that's one of the benefits of having the MITM proxy. That's not a click fix attack. That is a real capture. And now we are on the legitimate interbank website. This isn't a phishing site, and we could open a Peruvian bank account. But in the background, we've also installed the fake app which was the objective of this payload. But they make it a bit stealthier. I, I have a kind of an appreciation for malware that does that. So then, if you like uh, this product, you think this looks great, being able to test malware on Windows, Linux, and now Android interactively in your browser with no required download. You don't have to set this up. This is actually using the ARM version of Android as well, which you can't easily as an individual emulate unless you have an M1 MacBook. It's all here, easy. Well. You can click the link in the description to get started for free with your business or school email to sign up. And then if you like what you see, you can check out the plans over here and you've got options. Uh, if you're using this non-commercially or just want to try it out, the free plan is very featured. You can use Android, Windows, and Linux. But if you want some more powerful features such as privacy and the MITM proxy that lets you intercept requests, uh, you'll, you're going to want this plan, or if you're a big business, you may want to inquire about Enterprise, which enables even more flexibility. So that is going to be all for me for now in this video. Thank you to Anyrun for sponsoring this video and being a consistent supporter of the channel, and also making a good product that has allowed me to show you some Android malware. How should you prevent it? Well, the biggest one remains not downloading apps from untrusted sources, just like you would on a computer. Mobile operating systems do have a better security than desktop operating systems, but that's not to say that there aren't security threats. So that's all for me for now. Bye!